This video introduces the dot product of two vectors. Suppose the vectors a and b are given in terms of components. Then the dot product, a dot b, is given by multiplying together corresponding components and adding them up. That is, a dot b is a1 times b1 plus a2 times b2 plus a3 times b3. A lot of textbooks will write the dot product using a dot. I tend to write it with a symbol of a circle instead, just to distinguish it from ordinary multiplication of scalars. Let's find the dot product of these two vectors. Well, let's see, four, two, negative one dotted with seven, zero, five. I just multiply together corresponding components and add them up, so that's 4 times 7 plus 2 times 0 plus negative 1 times 5, which adds up to 23. Notice that the dot product of two vectors is a scalar, not a vector. Although I've defined dot product for vectors with three components, so three-dimensional vectors, it's also possible to define dot products analogously for two-dimensional vectors or, or even n-dimensional vectors. I'll write it out for two-dimensional vectors. If the vector C has components C1, C2, and D has components D1, D2, then the dot product C dot D is, as you would expect, C1, D1 plus C2, D2. Dot product satisfies some handy properties. First of all, it's commutative. That means A dot B is the same thing as b dot a. This follows from the fact that regular multiplication is commutative because if we write it out into components, a dot b, that means a1, a2, a3 dotted with b1, b2, b3, that's a1, b1 plus a2, b2 plus a3, b3, well, I could use the fact that multiplication is commutative to rearrange that multiplication, so that's b1a1 plus b2a2 plus b3a3, which is the same thing as b1b2b3 dotted with a1a2a3, in other words, b dot a. So dot product is commutative. Dot product satisfies the distributive property. If I take a dotted, with b plus c, that's the same thing as a dotted with b plus a dotted with c. I won't write out the justification for this one, but I encourage you to try it yourself. The fact that dot product is distributive just follows from writing it out all out in components and using the fact that regular multiplication and addition are distributive. There's an associative property for dot product, but it might not be the thing that first springs to mind. What might first spring to mind for me, thinking about associative property and dot product, I might want to write down something like a dot b dot c is equal to a dot b dot c like this. But in fact, this does not make sense. The reason it doesn't make sense is because b dot c is a scalar, but a is a vector and you can't dot a vector with a scalar. So instead of doing this, to write down associative property, we have to combine both scalar multiplication together with dot products. So if C, for example, is a scalar, then we can write down C multiplied by A dot B, because now a dot b is a scalar, we're just multiplying two scalars, two numbers together, so that makes sense. And this is the same thing as c multiplied by a dotted with b, which is also the same thing as a dotted with c multiplied by b. So this is the associative property for dot products and scalar multiplication. And again, you can justify it by writing everything out in terms of components. What happens if you take the zero vector and dot it with another vector? Well, the zero vector is just the vector whose components are all zero. If you dot that with 
any other vector, you just get a bunch of zeros added up, which is the zero scalar. So the zero vector dotted with any vector is the zero scalar. Now, what happens when you take the dot product of a vector with itself? Well, let's see, if I have a vector and I write it out in terms of components, and I take the dot product of that vector a with itself, I just get a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared. Hey, I recognize that. That's just the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared squared, or in other words, the norm of a squared. So we have the fact that a dotted with itself is its length, magnitude, or norm squared. This fact will come in handy in the future. So far we've defined dot product in terms of components, but dot product can also be defined in terms of magnitudes and angles. If we have two vectors, a and b, and theta is the angle between them, then it turns out that the dot product of a and b is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine of that angle between them. Note that there are actually two angles that you could use for the angle between these two vectors. You could use this one, or you could use this big one here, but it doesn't actually matter which angle you plug into your formula because cosine of 360 minus an angle, so that's that bigger angle, is the same thing as cosine of the angle. Let's use this alternate definition in the following example. Suppose V and W meet at a 45 degree angle and have lengths of 4 and 6 respectively. Then the dot product, V dot W, is given by the length of V times the length of W times cosine of the angle between them. So that's going to be 4 times 6 times cosine of 45 degrees. Well, that's 24 times the square root of 2 over 2, or 12 square root of 2. In this example, we use the length and the angle to find the dot product, but can also turn things around. And if we're given the dot product and the length, we can use that to find the angle between the two vectors. Here, we still know that a dot b is the length of a times the length of b times the cosine between them. But now we're given that the dot product is 20 and the lengths are 10 and 4, so it's easy to solve for cosine of theta as 20 over 40 or 1 half. Based on the unit circle, we know that an angle with cosine of 1 half corresponds to an angle of pi over 3 or negative pi over 3. So we can say that the angle is pi over 3, or 60 degrees. A negative angle doesn't really make sense in this context. The same ideas used in the previous problem can be generalized. In general, if theta is an angle between two vectors a and b, then cosine of theta is equal to a dotted with b divided by the length of a times the length of b. This follows easily from the fact that a dot b is given by this formula and simply solving for cosine theta. So if we want to find the angle between these two vectors, we can start by computing cosine of that angle as the dot product divided by the length. This works out to 20 divided by the square root of 14 times the square root of 53. Working out the cosine inverse of this quantity gives us an angle of about 42.76 degrees or about 0 0.7463 radians. In this video, we saw two different definitions of dot product, one in terms of components and another in terms of magnitudes and angles. Both these definitions together 
give us a handy way of calculating the angle between two vectors when all you know is the components. Namely, we can use the second definition to find the cosine theta in terms of the dot product and the lengths, and use the first definition to actually calculate the dot product. Now, you may be wondering, are these two very different definitions of dot product actually equivalent? Will they actually give the same answer for any possible vectors? Well, yes, they are. But to see a justification for why that's true, based on the law of cosines, you'll need to watch the next video.